Well, welcome back, Mike from Canavan. Well, today we are talking about estate planning, specifically account types of your investments while we're uh, kind of getting ready for estate planning and really just how everyone should have their accounts aligned. A couple of kind of common things I've seen in the past that could have been disastrous if we didn't fix them for clients. So this article is going to go up on the website. It's not quite up on the article or on the website yet because I'm pre-recording this a little bit. But this kind of steps through the steps of estate planning. A lot of these are more uh, state attorney type steps and state attorneys are very important to this process for writing wills and trusts if necessary and things along those lines. But this one about considered transfer on death agreements is uh, very much in the purview of financial advisors. And this is how are you going to set up your account specifically? Now, a transfer on death agreement is very important in uh, the financial world because it bypasses really the rest of your estate. Wills, unless it's in a trust, it's going to bypass that. Similarly to beneficiaries on IRA accounts, which bypass things like wills. So um, very poorly understood by the investing public about like how accounts are going to pass to the next generation. That We have a lot of control of that actually in the financial world through the beneficiary system and the transfer on death system. Um, I've got a little slide here that I just want to go through. So the one of the most important things to understand about transfer on death accounts is that they're fantastic and that they usually occur quickly. So the process is someone passes away, the beneficiaries or say the joint owner of that account, like the spouse notifies us that the person has passed away. We then freeze the account at that point because we're not allowed to really do any transaction on an account that has a deceased owner. Um, and then we tell them that we need to have a death certificate. They bring in the death certificate and then we start the process of opening a new account for the new owners. And then we transfer those assets until we've transferred that assets. We really can't do anything. Now the account isn't going to get liquidated, meaning that investments are going to stay this, the, the same. Uh, and then we can change them once we move them to a now new account. Very important. To remember that is also going to happen for joint accounts. So if you have a transfer on death account, with a with your spouse, if they pass away, you will not have access to that money until you bring in a death certificate and the account moves to the to a new account in only your name. I think that rule is awful, right? If someone has passed away, it's often the case that you know they there's some financial need that comes up and they don't have access to the account. Now, this is not limited to transfer on death accounts. We just have a standard joint account that does not have a transfer on death agreement attached to it. It's gonna be the exact same rule. Uh, in fact, it may take even longer because then it may have to go through probate and it's going to be a nightmare. So transfer on death is better than other accounts, but you still have this very important stipulation. It's also important to remember that TOD accounts and trading authority are very different. So uh, if for a TOD, it specifies who is going to gain control of the account upon your passing. And that happens relatively quickly, but those people have no access to your account prior to you passing. If they, you know, if your TOD beneficiary calls me up and says, hey, how much is in dad's account? I can't tell them that. Uh, if they call up and say, hey, dad wants to sell this and buy that or send, can you send dad $10,000? I can't do that. I got to talk to dad. Now, if you have a trading authority on the account, it's kind of the opposite. They can transact on the account on your behalf. There's all sorts of rules you can and cannot allow them. You can and like choose what you want them to be able to do. For example, you can set it up so that I can talk to them about the account, but they can't trade. Or maybe they can trade, but they can't take money out of the account. In that sense, they have uh, access to the account, but it has nothing to do with who the account's going to pass to. And this may be something along the lines of uh, maybe you have one child that's helping you with your finances, but you want the account to be divided between your three children once you pass, right? So you put one child on as the trading authority, and then you set up the TOD as three separate, you know, it goes to three separate children. If they bring in one death certificate, we contact all three, set up three accounts, and split the account three ways. So trading authorities and TOD are totally different. This is a very similar process for beneficiaries on IRAs. It's slightly different. Uh, the only thing I ever see people tripping up on IRA beneficiaries is do not generally do not leave it to a trust or to your estate. It is best to leave it to specific people. That is for taxation reasons. 
uh, effectively, you don't want your estate paying the taxes. The taxation will most likely be higher than just passing it to a single beneficiary. If you have questions around that, that is estate attorney stuff. Uh, if they are telling you to leave your IRAs to a trust or an estate, there can be reasons for that, but I'm not qualified to answer those questions. All right, joint accounts. So, so now, like, where are some trip ups I've seen clients have? And this is often. They are trying, what they want to do is have a TOD and or a trading authority, but they've either set the account themselves up like a Fidelity or like an online brokerage, or to be perfectly honest, they worked with an advisor who had no idea what they were doing. And I will see joint accounts. So let's say your spouse has passed and you want one of your children to help. I see people open joint accounts with their kids on the account. And that's a problem for lots of reasons. First of all, that account is going to be wholly owned by that person when you pass. So if you have three kids and you want it to go to all of them, a TOD agreement on a joint account is only going to take effect when both people pass away. So it's not going to go to your three kids. And you might think, oh, well, they're going to then have all the money and then I trust them and they're going to give it to their brothers and sisters. This has nothing to do with trust. It has to do with all sorts of important reasons around taxation and gifting laws, right? So you can only give other people a certain amount of money per year without it going against uh, some gifting rules in the US. So let's say you pass a $300,000 account to your daughter, who is then supposed to distribute it to the three children. She's going to be limited by the amount of money she can give those people each year. She can't just get 300,000 herself by through inheritance, which is different than gifting, and then give $100,000 to her siblings. That's not how our system works, right? You, you, have to, you have to go through the normal rules. So what you would want to do in that sense is have your own account with a trading authority on it, which is your one child, and then a TOD ben, you know, designation for the three children. So uh, joint accounts with the next generation, specifically if you have multiple kids, and then I have seen the exact same thing with IRAs. And this is even worse, which is leaving your IRA to one kid who's going to be your executor, who's then going to distribute it to the rest of the family. Again, it has nothing to do with trust. That person is going to get stuck with the tax bill of your entire IRA and be now stuck with gifting limits. So uh, this is the biggest no-no I've seen a couple of different times, which is leaving an IRA to a single beneficiary, expecting that beneficiary to then distribute it to everyone else. So there's lots and lots more to talk about this. Uh, job security, I guess, for me. Uh, nope, I don't need to change. If you liked the video, thought it was useful, please like and subscribe for future content. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you.